nobody care about them saggy titties or them scratch marks or whatever it is you had going on or them freckles with uh, that's pronounced. But Marvy Poo, Teddy P don't care about none of that shit, girl. He still think you attractive. I think, because I ain't got there yet. Hello, love bugs. If you have not already done so, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you are not a part of our Patreon book club, please hit the link below for you to be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about um, Jen Gaze, After the Dance, My Life with Marvy Pooh, part 14. Anyway, when we left off last week, you know, uh, Jan was convinced that Marvy Poo had made it in a, an obsession to destroy them. She said the only time she got relief was when Teddy Pendergrass popped up. What she says is that because Teddy P had been labeled the new Marvin Gaye, it was getting to him. Yeah, because I don't want to hear. I mean, of course, you know that, you know, it's always going to be a replacement of a version of you, okay? That happens a lot in the life, it does. But there will never be another you. And Marvin Gaye and his insecurities was killing him. The booger sugar, you know, jumping in the backseat with prostitutes, you know, and child, and all that, you know, all his mental illness that was undiagnosed and he's self-medicating with it. I mean, I mean, mm. what it meant to Marvy Poo ultimately was that Teddy P was in and Marvin Gaye was out. Now in 1977, when Teddy Pendergrass left Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes, Teddy's star was rising while Marvy Poo's was falling. Marvy Poo had released that album, Hear My Dear, that flopped. Now that's not my words, that's her words. She said it flopped. I don't know anything about a Here My Dear album, well I know about it, but the fact of the matter is, I'm not the one to say that the album flopped. So all you Marvin Gaye stands, don't beat me in the face, okay? That was her words, not mine. Marvin Gaye blames it on Birda Gordy. Marvin Gaye said, it is no way in hell that Birda Gordy would have promoted an album that was dragging his sister. Well, nigga, you should have thought about that before you made the goddamn album. Now, because he's an artist, and you know, our artists express themselves through either their music, their art, their poetry, whatever it is that they do that is creative, okay? Marvy Poo expressed his disdain for Teddy P in a song that he called Ego Trippin'. Marvin recited the words, then sung the hook. Jan said it was written to ridicule Teddy P, but she said that it mirrored Marvin Gaye's behavior. Now, remember this. Um, Rick James also said that he didn't like Teddy P because he said that Teddy P was arrogant. I mean, how is it that, like, and I think Rick James was one of the most arrogant mother hunchies out there, but eh. You know, they always point the finger at somebody else. Jan and said that when the song Ego Tripping Out was released, it got very little airplay. Although it should have hurt his little feelings, it did, but what it did was fueled his energy to go ahead and make a whole album dedicated to shizzing on Teddy P. And Marvy Poo planned on calling it The Love Man. Mm. I don't know, Marvy Poo. Maybe you should focus on some other bullshit. I don't know. What year is this? 1970 something, child? You should have been focusing on disco. That's what you should have been doing. But eh, I digress. Marvin Gaye says to Jan, This album will knock Teddy P right off his pedestal. Jan says his efforts were in vain because while he was making the album, he fell into a deeper depression. Okay? That means more booger sugar and more weave and more erratic 
behavior. Jan said as a result of his depression, the family dynamic suffered, that he only spent a few hours with the kids, uh, a few hours with her. Child, I wouldn't want to spend no time with that nigga. All he do, every time he spend time with you, he destroy you. You just taking a gamble every day. Uh, is today he going to be nice? Like I said before, that's abuse. You know, you wake up every morning, look at the nigga and be like, okay, who you going to be today? That's abuse to me. Okay, but and that's her problem, not mine. So one day while Marvy Poo was in his dark depression, he drank some mushroom tea because, you know, while they was around there to the Hawaii, uh, it was a whole bunch of mushroom fields. That's probably why it cost so much to stay down there because they knew it was a whole bunch of mushrooms. Shrooms, for those of you who do shrooms, I've never done a shroom. Fuck a shroom. I'm not trying to see... Uh, who is that uh, Puff the Magic Dragon? If I'm, you know, trying to, you know, get lifted. I don't want to see Puff the Magic Dragon. I don't want to see Sigmund the Sea Monster when I get lifted. I just want to go to sleep. One day while he was high off booger sugar weed and mushroom tea, he had a bad trip, okay? He was furious, Jan say, for no fucking reason. He was furious at her. For no fucking reason. She said his fury turned to madness. He started talking about betrayal again. And his eyes turned red with hatred. Child bang. He took a kitchen knife. Put it to Jan's throat. And said I ought to kill you. This love is killing me. So I ought to kill you. Ooh. Fortunately the rage subsided. And he lowered the knife. At that point, that's when Jan realized, oh, I got to get the hell away from this nigga. At that point, that's when you realize you had to get the hell away from that nigga, girl. But anyway, child, she says she got to protect her and her kids. So the first thing she do when all of us get mad at our loved ones is run home to their mammy. As soon as they left Hawaii, because, you know, they was around there having a more good time in Hawaii slash Maui, and got back to L.A., Jan took the kids and fled to her mammy house. Uh, Jan said, unfortunately, this was the dynamic of their relationship. I hate you, bitch. Jan says, I hate you too. Marvin Gaye says, shut the fuck up talking to me, bitch. I beat your ass again. Jan said, try it. I mean, you can talk mad shit over the phone. Mad shit. He would apologize again. Baby, I don't know what is making me want to whoop your ass occasionally. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm going to get my life together. She said because of all this turmoil she was going through, she needed her mother. Yeah, you needed your mammy, child. God bless those who still have their mother. So Jan and the kids moved in with Jan's mother at her place in Hermosa Beaches. At the same time, Marby Poo lost the studio, and uh, Hidden Hills. Mm. So that was their home, and their the home, you know, it, Hidden Hills was the main home. She didn't say that they lost or that he lost the parents' home over there in Gramercy. But anyway, Jan said that her mother was a helpful and conscientious grandmother. She was also a drug buddy. I don't get that. Getting high with your kids. I don't know about that. But anyway, mom's household provided safety and mom's friends provided drugs. Marby Poole would drive up to see the kids. Jan's mama said, keep that nigga out my goddamn house. She don't like him. Because, of course, who would like a man that is treating her daughter harshly? You know, because the mother is looking at it like, girl, you don't have to take that bullshit. You don't have to take that. You are beautiful. Yeah, you got two kids by a dirty dick nigga, but you good. Okay? You beautiful. You don't have to take that, but you know, you can't tell nobody nothing when they in the throes of passion. Okay? But Jan mother, Barbie, that was her name, Barbie. Don't y'all forget, Barb's. Jan mother saw the behavior on one minute, on one drive up, it was, I love you, Jan. I want you back. On the next drive up, it was, fuck you, bitch. Don't come around me no more. I hate you. And over and over again. That's the vicious cycle. And Jan said that was their vicious cycle. One day, Jan took the kids down there to the beach to have a good time. She said she tried to spend as much time with the kids as the beach as possible. Because you really don't want to lock the children up. Okay? But what she said was that one time when she returned home, meaning her mammy's home, 
from the beach, there was a call waiting for her. Well, a message of a call waiting for her. Her mother said, um, Jan baby, you got a call. A call? From who? Mari Pooh? Jan mother said, uh-uh. From Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy Pendergrass, what the hell he want from me? Bitch, you know what he want from you? The same thing everybody else wanted from you. To fuck. Nobody care about them saggy titties or them scratch marks or whatever it is you had going on or them freckles with, uh, that's pronounced. But Marvy Poo, Teddy P don't care about none of that shit, girl. He still think you attractive. I think, because I ain't got there yet. You know, I really don't know what the fuck Teddy P want, but eh. I digress. Jan's instructions to her mother because she with the bullshit now. Because she admitted that because she's so confused about the relationship, she don't really know what the hell is going on. What's going on is you don't fuck, okay, your, your, your husband's friend. Or you don't fuck your husband's foe. Even one, friend foe, you don't fuck. There's too many different people out there. You know who you could have hunched in the 70s? Let's see who else she could have hunched in the 70s. Who was fine in the 70s, y'all? Put it below. Was fine. Al Green, wait, was he married? I don't know. But it was some fine men back there in the 70s. Who did I like? I mean, you, I mean, I, I mean, I was like nine, but you could have uh, hunched Greg Brady. It could have been a whole bunch of people. You go up, Marsha Brady, whatever you into. Jan gave her mammy instructions to um, set up a date. You know, okay. we can we ain't had no cell phones, child. You had to do it like that, okay? I'll meet you there at 10 o'clock, ah, 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 child. And if you couldn't make it, you, your ass was just stood up, okay? Jan said, Mama, set that date up for me, please. Barbie said, not a problem. Let me rub your back when you say it's sore. You hear him talking to you, girl? He got so much love to give. Girl, he want to give it all to you. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. They say as my patron loves. Have a